Good morning, Epworth. We're glad you've taken some time to join us in worship this morning in taking and taking some time to give praise and worship to God. We want to take and just share a few things that are happening here, here at Epworth and um, invite you to take and participate as you can. Um, tomorrow morning, um, we'll resume our Monday morning check-in. Um, it's been a few weeks, so hopefully people are, are bringing some things that they can share or things that they've been doing over the last few weeks. It's at 10 o'clock via Zoom. Um, you should, by end of Sunday evening, get a, a link via Zoom to be able to be part of it. If not, please contact me um, via my email or even give me a, a call to let me know that you're interested and I'll make sure you can be part of that. So again, that'll be tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock via Zoom. We're also re restarting our Monday discussion group, uh, our Wednesday evening discussion group at 7 o'clock, again via Zoom. We're getting together as we have been with our brothers and sisters from Asbury and Pastor John Dahl. And again, we'll be sending out a link for that, a lesson sheet to help keep you um, knowing what we're going to be doing and again invite you to be part of it and again if you don't get the link let me know also that this coming saturday is once again another one of our food pantry days um, we're getting a great turnout we have lots of food and lots of help to take and get um, food to those that that need it and we need you to take and help get the word out Keep your eyes open, your ears open to, to those who you may know that could use some, some groceries to help get them by, to make ends meet. Um, we're here and from 10 to 12 on Saturday and look forward to helping all those who show up. I also want to let you know that if you haven't been aware, um, Burlington County currently is allowing people to pre-register for the vaccine. Um, the parameters for who can get that seem to be changing um, quite quickly here. Um, it's a simple process of um, offering some information and then the county will get back in touch with you when it's time for you to schedule an appointment. Also, if you're not aware, um, Morristown Mall is going to become a super vaccine site. Um, and I'm not sure how that will affect all of us, um, but it is worthy of, for all of us to keep track of, of what's happening. And whenever you can take and schedule a, a vaccine, whether it's through the super site or ShopRite or, or someplace else, take advantage of that situation to, to make sure that um, you're, you're covered and, and doing all you can to stay well. As we gather this morning, as always, I invite you to take in the comments section, especially if you're on Facebook, to just say hello to one another um, and, and let us know that you're watching. 
And certainly when we come to a time of prayer, share those things that are on your heart so that we can pray with one another when the time comes. So let us set our hearts and minds upon God. Let us gather in worship. And as we have done so often to mark the beginning of our worship with one another, my hope is that you've got the candle that you're lighting with us as we do each morning to take and be a symbol of the light of Christ and the Holy Spirit that brings us together. No matter how dark the world may be, it is the light of Christ that draws us together. And for that we give thanks. God has called us to gather together as beloved children. We come ready to share our authentic selves, our hearts, with God and with one another. Wherever we are in our faith journey, God meets us right where we are, calling us out from isolation and fear into sacred community. We come to humbly praise and worship the one who chose vulnerability for the sake of perfect love. became vulnerable to the human experience. He came to be with us, brought healing to our relationship with God, and set us on a path to become our full selves. He came to be for others and with others. Lead us to take the same risk of growing together. Help us develop our vulnerability and courage that we may help others feel safe and be vulnerable in community through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning is found in Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 to 11. In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who, being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore, 
God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. This ends the reading. Amen. second scripture this morning is coming from the Gospel of Mark, the fifth chapter, beginning in the 24th verse. A large crowd followed and pressed around him, and a woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years. She had suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors and had spent all she had, yet instead of getting better, she grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak because she thought, if I just touch his clothes, I will be healed. Immediately, her bleeding stopped and she felt in her body that she had been freed from her suffering. At once, Jesus realized that the power had gone out from him and he turned around in the crowd and asked, who touched my clothes? You see, the people crowded against you, his disciples answer, and yet you, you ask, who touched me? But Jesus kept looking around to see who had done it. Then the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell at his feet, and trembling with fear, told him the whole truth. He said to her, Daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be freed from your suffering. May God bless the reading and hearing of this holy word. This morning we're starting a sermon series on courage. What it means to be courageous. And we're going to be looking at it from a couple of different ways as we pair things up with courage to be, courage to. So we're going to be looking at that. But before we go too far, we have to at least have an understanding 
of what we mean by courage. The simple definition is that mental or moral strength to take and venture, persevere, go forth in the midst of fear and danger. It's a pretty simple definition. And as I think about it, an example of courage, I, I'm drawn to those soldiers, those National Guard and law enforcement, who at this hour are standing guard to take and be there around our capitals, around our government buildings. It takes courage to, to venture forth in the midst of, of danger and even with maybe even a sense of fear. Think of your own examples of moments in your own life where you have had to be courageous, to step forth in the midst of danger or fear. This morning we're going to take and think about what it means to have the courage of vulnerability. That is a great word, right? Vulnerability. The two kind of go together. Now, vulnerability talks about that idea of going forth, putting yourself out there and knowing that you could be wounded or hurt and you're open for attack. Two things kind of sound the same and go together. To take and, and be standing out there in the open in the midst of danger, knowing that at any moment in time you might come under attack and be wounded, whether it's physical or verbal, those attacks to some extent have that same feeling of pain. We've all been there to some extent. Maybe not in a law enforcement, standing guard kind of place, but we've all been in that place where it's taken courage and with an understanding that we're going to be vulnerable as we step out. It happens, I think, every time if you get before a, a group of people and have to share a, a message or perform, play, sing, play an instrument, make a presentation, as your, your organization or, or meeting. I think it takes courage and an understanding of vulnerability as we, we gather in our Bible studies or small groups. Too often, I think, people take and, and, and hold back, not willing to necessarily share what their thoughts are on a on a passage or, or something that somebody else has said. No, we, we, we stay back because we don't want to take and be the one that's vulnerable, that might be open to be attacked or wounded because of something we, we might say or something we think. It happens in our lives where we take and have things that are on our hearts and on our souls and yet we hold them within. We're, we're afraid to take and, and step out and, and to take and share it with others. We don't know what they might think, what they might say. They might even just push us aside. It takes courage to be vulnerable. What does all this have to do with our faith? Well, I think it starts to some extent when you think about what Paul's saying to us this morning. It took a lot of courage, I think, for God to take and, and leave his throne, leave his heavenly kingdom, and come and, and walk and be among us as his son, Jesus Christ. Now, Jesus could have come into our world with all of his godly powers, and, and just take and, and just wipe his hand here and there and make everything right. But the vulnerability was that Jesus came fully human. Yes, 
fully divine as well, but fully human. Jesus walked among us, walked to some extent in our shoes. He took and understood that the things that he said were going to come under attack. That he would suffer wounds for the choices that he made. People were constantly taking and and judging him, trying to pigeonhole him. And yet, he had that courage to continue to persevere, fully aware of his vulnerability. He ate with the sinners. And he was attacked for that. He took and and heard the the calls of of the most vulnerable, the lepers outside the city gates. He heard the call of others who just wanted to be recognized. In some cases, just the chance of living normal lives. Jesus heard them, went to be among them, and at times was attacked for showing mercy, grace, offering forgiveness. We have one of those stories this morning. A story of a woman who certainly finds herself at the edge of society. We're told that she's been bleeding for for 12 years, not aware of any man in her life that would offer her protection or support. It was a patriarchal society after all. We don't even get to know her name, and yet we know quite a bit about her. We know that she's a woman of deep faith and an understanding of Jesus. She had, we understand her courage her courage to step out in the midst of being so vulnerable. To step from the edge of society into the very center. As she took it, you can imagine it in your mind's eye that she's weaving her way through the crowd. Fearful, i got to believe that if somebody recognizes her, they're going to attack her verbally, even maybe physically. She keeps inching her way closer, driven by the fact that she knows that maybe for sure if she could just touch the cloak of Jesus, just touch it, that she'd be healed. Her life would be different. She finally gets there and touches Jesus and says that instantly she took it and felt her. Her body changed. She felt that healing course through her. Now Jesus also senses that he's been touched. In fact, asks his disciples, he says, who touched me? And astonishingly, the, the disciples say, are you crazy? Take a look around, Jesus. We're in this massive crowd. You're getting touched. You're getting bumped all the time. But Jesus sensed someone vulnerable had touched him. Now, I I don't think you can just simply say, well, that's his divine powers, that, you know, he had that hypersensitivity, and, you know, that's the, maybe. But maybe it's the idea of understanding and recognizing there are people around him that were hurting. There are people around him that needed to connect with him. As he turns and looks, the, the woman comes, no, comes and falls at his feet, it tells us. And Jesus, in, in that loving way, says, you know, it's not this, it's nothing me, it's your faith. It's your faith that's healed you. Get up and go in peace. See, I think this is a story that many of us need to be thinking about. We need to hear. Because in different ways, I think we're, we, we all at some point are that woman. 
We all have things that leave us vulnerable. We all have things that are upon our hearts that we hold on to out of fear that, you know, if, if others knew how I felt, if others knew what, what I was struggling with, they just push me aside. They wouldn't understand. So we hold on to them. We keep them close to our heart and we muddle through. And yet Jesus is there to take and reach out to us to ensure us we're not alone. I think about those men and women who stand shoulder to shoulder throughout our country today. I wonder how often it is that they may glance to their left or glance to their right. And there's some assurance, encouragement that they're not standing alone. They have people who are standing with them. We need to know that too. We need to know that Jesus is standing right there with us. And we need to be encouraged that we, we can take and, and reach out and know that Jesus is there and is aware of us, our situation, and is there to encourage us. My hope is you have someone else too in your life, a friend, maybe someone in your family, who you can take and allow yourself to be vulnerable with, to have some really deep and heartfelt conversations without fear of being wounded or attacked. My hope is that we can take and understand the courage it takes for someone to be vulnerable and, and for us to be recipients of someone who, who might want to take and, and need to share what's on their heart, what's on their mind. Are we taking and, and opening our hearts, opening our ears and our eyes to look around to see who around us is hurting, who may need to be encouraged, who may need to know that with you they can find a, a safe place where maybe what's offered is understanding. What's offered is compassion and mercy. What's offered is extended hands to embrace them in those moments when maybe they feel all alone. To look to the left and look to the right and know that they stand with others who love and care for them, who have their backs. It takes courage to be vulnerable, to step out, but know that Jesus is there to take and bring healing and to bring peace. May we know that for ourselves and may we offer it to others in Jesus' name. Amen. As we come to this time of prayer, you're invited to take and share your concerns in the comments, especially if you're on Facebook. Don't also forget that you can always take and, and send your requests to the church office as well so we can include them in the prayer requests that we send out on Monday and, and Thursday afternoons. So let us come and be in prayer. Oh God, we come in the midst of dark and difficult times for our country, for our people, for our family and friends. 
We certainly pray, O oh God, for our government, our leadership, our country that seems to be on the brink of being torn apart in, in so many different ways. People taking and, and being separated by ideologies and politics rather than coming together for the common good rather than taking and understanding how strong we can be if we would just pause to take and listen, to put aside our weapons and in the, the idea of causing harm, and yet come and be in conversation, discussion, taking and allowing wisdom to take it and sink in and guide us. God, we need you. We need you and, and your son Jesus to take once again and, and place your hand upon us to give your grace and mercy to us to send peace. God, we, we take and find ourselves on the brink of, of something new that's happening, and may it be a peaceful transition, and may these times be ones that we can look back on, not with our heads hung in shame, but with our heads held high to know that we can be better than this. And God, I pray, oh God, for this pandemic to take and be corralled and controlled in some way, even as we stand on the edge of having the vaccine available to so many, yet so many are still waiting and in need. We pray, oh God, that you, you take and be with those that need your strength that in the midst of their own vulnerability of health, whether it be of mind, of mind, of body, or soul, oh God, that you are there to bring healing, as we've seen so many times in scriptures. We pray, oh God, for those who have heavy hearts. So many seem to be dying every single day, and the numbers just seem to be increasing. We look to you. We look to you, O oh God, to take and give us that bright light of hope of something down the road. That light that takes and shines in the midst of our darkness to guide us, to move us ahead. And God, I, I pray for each and every one of us that's worshiping here this day. Meet us where we need you. Give us encouragement and hope where we may find ourselves in despair. Take and give us strength in the moments of weakness. Comfort in the midst of pain, however that may be coming upon us. And we certainly pray, O oh God, for the most vulnerable among us who are in need of, of food, of clothes, of jobs, of shelter. Help us to continue to do all that we can to recognize and help them. And we most assuredly give thanks for your son, Jesus Christ, who while he was with us, showing us mercy, love, and grace, he gave us words so that we might reach out to you. And so with our hearts, we pray most sincerely, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
now come to the end of this worship service i pray that god the father son and holy spirit be with each and every one of you to encourage you to take and and go out into the world and know that you are not alone and in those moments when you feel vulnerable reach out to jesus and know that he is there to offer love and compassion and mercy and may we, as we go out into the world, take and encounter other people who are vulnerable and, and offer that same love and compassion and mercy to them as well. The, we can take and bring glory to Jesus Christ. I want to thank you all for, for your continued support to our ministry, where we are truly reaching out to try to make a dif difference, especially to the most vulnerable around us. And may each and every one of you do all that you can to keep yourself safe and well. And watch out for others too. To take and, and keep them in your mind. Be safe. Until that time again, when God calls us together to worship, to minister, to take and be together in his son's holy name. God bless you all. Mm -hmm.